Hey guys, excellent news. I couldn't be happier. Oko Thief of Crowns. Oko Thief of Crowns got banned. Uh, from the dredge perspective, not a really big deal. It's not really a card we care about, but the overall impact it was having on the metagame, uh, I think it was pretty clear at this point was just terrible. It was doing nothing good. Uh, I'm happy to see it gone. And not only did we see Oko banned, uh, we also saw Dreadhorde Arcanist banned and Astrolabe banned. Um, personally, I think I would have just banned Oko, but I'm not complaining about either of those cards being banned. And having played the format now for a, a bit over a week, a week and a bit, um, the format's in a much better place. The format's in so much better of a place. There's way less, like, five-color control decks. People are playing Snap Custom Age again. Uh, the Delver decks don't have this insane late game that just sort of crushes every other fair deck. Um, it's, it's, it seems pretty good. Maybe, maybe I'll eat my words in a few months. Maybe the format will just devolve into Euro nonsense and we'll be in a problem. Um, I actually recorded a video. I recorded a video, um, I want to say about a week ago. Uh, but as I was editing the video, um, I started, I was still playing leagues, I was jamming leagues because I've been loving the format and I was making changes to the list. So I thought I'd re-record it, um, give it a bit longer time to see how things have shaken up and this is where I am at at the moment. You'll note that the Dread Return and the Ashen Rider, um, in the video recorded last week, they were in the main deck. They've gone to the sideboard, and we've got the Ox and the Hogak in the main deck. Uh, not the Hogak, sorry. The Ox and the Icarid in the main deck. The Ox and the Icarid were basically swapped around before. Now they're in the main deck. I think it's pretty okay to have the Icarid and the Ox in the main deck at the moment. Maybe the metagame will change, and you just make the swap around. I think that's fine. I think that's okay. It's just a meta call whether you have Dreb main deck Dread Return and Ashen Rider or not at this point. Um, these two sort of like swap. These two, these four cards sort of swap around for each other so well that it, it's it's uh, a pretty easy sort of swap to make when you want to meta game against certain decks. You expect blue decks, you expect fair decks. Have the Icarid and the Oxford Gunners. Um, you expect Dread Return and uh, you expect like things where Dread Return's good, so like Chalice decks and like um, Cloud Post decks and things like that. You just put the Dread Return in the main deck, it's fine. Uh, the main deck's pretty much the same apart from that. I'm not going to go over that. Uh, I'll. I have three City of Brass over two gemstone, uh, over three gemstone mine. I'm not sure if I've talked about this before, but I'm very happy with this configuration. Probably the people with pimped out decks aren't happy with this. Um, they'll probably tell you lies like, oh, gemstone mine's just better. It's not. It's not been better since Ox of Agonis has been printed. Um, and uh, why, why would you want to pay life? Well, it's bad against it's bad against Rashadonport. Look. Any deck with Rashad and Port, you're not losing if they're tapping down your City of Brass. There's something else that's going on if you're losing the game. Like, maybe they'll kill you by tapping your City of Brass, but that's not why you lost the game. Something else went wrong. Um, the life loss is basically irrelevant in every matchup. The only matchup where it's not irrelevant is, like, Burn and Blue Red Delver. Those are the only two matchups where it's not irrelevant. And honestly, even against Blue Red Delver, I would rather, if my if I only had one land against Blue Red Delver, I would rather have a City of Brass and a Gemstone Mine. So that's the reason why I've gone up to three City of Brass, two Gemstone Mine, instead of three Gemstone Mine, two City of Brass. It's entirely because when I see one land hands, I want that one land to be a land that doesn't die to itself. I want that land to be a land that sticks around, and I think 3-2 is a better configuration. I've considered going up to 4-1, uh, I think the presence of Blue Red Delver and some other fringe cases like hard casting lots of guys to play around Graveyard Hate um, means that there is a utility in having Gemstone Mine. So I've not gone to 4 1 yet. But I could see it possibly happening if the meta keeps shaking the way it is. Um, 
Ox of Agonis just wants your lands to stick around. You want to be able to... You can you can loop Ox many times, potentially, in a game. You just sack it to a therapy, cast it again. Um, and you don't want your lands dying. So, City of Brass, good card. Into the sideboard. Uh, it's a little bit all over the place at the moment, but it's a new metagame. Two Lane of Sanctity, standard. Um, there was... Three for a while when there was lots of cloud posts, but there's not any more. Uh, two Ley Line of the Void, two Fairy Macabre. The best graveyard deck in the format right now is not Black Red Reanimator, and uh, it's not Dredge, um, if you speak to people who aren't me. Uh, it's Oops All Spells, and the best piece of graveyard hate against Oops All Spells is Fairy Macabre. Ley Line of the Void is not very good against oops or spells if you look at their sideboards they have like eight answers to leyline of the void they are very prepared for leyline of the void what they're not prepared for is instant speed uncounterable uh goes through chancer of the annex from hand uh exile your dread return and your thassa's oracle they can't deal with that they just lose um so in that respect i think a 2-2 two -two split is good. You don't want to go down to zero Leyline of the Void. I think it is the better card against Black Red Reanimator, which isn't a completely dead deck in the metagame. Um, and uh, and you want it for versus Hogak and for the Mirror. Fairy Macabre is bad against both of those decks. But I think the, the, why are we playing Graveyard Hate is to beat the Graveyard decks that are faster than us. Oops All Spells is the most prominent of the graveyard decks that are faster than us, so we run two fairy macabres and two leyline of the voids, or at least that's what I'm doing at the moment. Graveyard hate, two stern dismissal for rainbow depths. I've not played against rainbow depths once since the bans. I don't know if that's just because everybody's having more fun playing decks that are actually enjoyable, um, instead of like heavily metagame turbo depths, um, or what, but. Uh, the the card that the the deck that this was for I've not played against I have played against standard depths however they have not had ley lines in the sideboard from what I've seen uh, I'm sort of keeping that there in a hedge just in case maybe if things keep going the way they are these will get changed to something else two Westmere best answer to ley line and chalice uh, because this can kill ley line through chalice and then you can generally win the game through a chalice uh even if uh, if there's no ley line in play you can generally like cobble together or win through a uh ley line especially since the most common chalice deck now seems to be eldrazi stompy um i think this card is good and we have one cure as dismissal this is just me getting angry because i kept getting double ley lined i got double ley lined in game two and game three by uh, Hogak, I actually managed to draw two answers to Leyline in game two, and I was like, ha, take that, and then I opened a hand in game three that was excellent, incredible hand, that had a Leyline answer, then he double Leylined me again, and I was like, what the hell, what is this, and then I lost. And I was very, uh, very tilted, so I put one cure of dismissal in the sideboard. This could be whatever. It was a third Whismare before, but maybe it should be a nature's claim. Maybe maybe, maybe Goblins is enough of the meta game that you want something that answers both Leyline and Nihil Spellbomb. Everything's a bit up in the air at the moment. Um, one thing that's absent from the sideboard, shenanigans. I've, I've done, I want to say, a decent amount of testing with shenanigans. Um, I've got caged a few times. I never cast the card. Be it I didn't dredge into the card. I pretty much never saw the card. Um, but I think even if I saw the card, it would be in situations where I was already dead or it would just get countered. I really don't like the card. I feel like if you want an answer to Cage from Blue Decks, I feel like uh, you want Ingot Chewer. I think Ingot Chewer, it's the red equivalent to Wismare that targets artifacts. Um, I feel like Ingot Chew is just a bit better. I feel like the the idea that you'll be able to dredge into a shenanigans. Also, the other thing that that, that annoyed me about shenanigans. Well, I never 
ever used shenanigans to answer a cage, there were definitely situations where um, I lost games because um, I did not have a fourth Icarid because I was having uh, shenanigans in this. I was running a configuration with Drebitan Ash and Rider in the sideboard. I was bringing in a pedal and a shenanigans, taking out a breakthrough and an Icarid. Um, but if I just had the fourth Icarid, I'd have won those games. So maybe if you were in a situation where you bring in just a shenanigans, take out a breakthrough, um, that would be better. I don't really like like if 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 you're if you have I feel like ox is just better. I don't really like going down to one breakthrough, and I definitely don't want to cut any of these cards um, against the Delver decks. So. I mean, you really can't bring in a second pedal, but I think a second pedal is generally pretty good against Delver. So really, if I think if I had a shenanigans, I'd just cut one breakthrough, bring in the shenanigans. Um, but as I said, I never cast it. I never cast it. I've tested it in the past. I've never cast it. It's, I, I, I don't know. Please, someone, if you're a dredge player and you play with shenanigans in the sideboard, sincerely... Play a bunch of games. Tell me how many times you actually cast that card because I've never seen anyone cast it. I think it's a it's a it's a mirage. It's a uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a, a ruse. It's a facade. No one casts it. They just put it there to intimidate people and make them scared. But no one ever actually casts the card. So I, I'm not I'm not concerned about it. Um, the, the other thing you could do, I mean, there's a Chalice of the Void. If you really wanted to run a Shenanigans, you could, but this is, this is a, this is a specific one-off. I have 15 cards in my sideboard, but I don't really care about having 15 cards in my sideboard, so I'm just going to play one-offs to target real specific matchups. This is for Echo Stompy. Matchups hot garbage. Awful. But if you play a chalice on zero, suddenly the matchup gets pretty decent. They 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 just sort of fall over. They can't they can't can for crypt. What they can do is they can can kill your chalice, and then get a crypt the next turn. But like that buys you so much time, given the fact that they can't like cast half their deck. Um, I've I've yet to lose a game, um, where I've managed to put a chalice on zero, uh, against that deck. Um. I mean, it's definitely possible you can lose games where you go Chalice on zero. I also like the fact that if they echo you, if they echo you into a hand that just happens to have Chalice in, because sometimes they're just forced to echo without a hole breacher because, like, you put so much pressure on board they have to try and find something. You draw a Chalice, you can just cast a Chalice on zero afterwards. Um, it's just for that matchup. It's a greedy one-off. Uh, I was running two for a bit, but there's way less Echo Stompy than there was before. And... Uh, yeah, that's the entire deck. Uh, let's run it through a league and see how it goes. Round one, we're against Willy Buzz. Um, bad against Wasteland. Okay against Force of Will. Um, this is very close. Uh, this is very close to a keep. I think game one blind, I keep this. It's very close to a mulligan. Very close, especially for a seven. We could get really punished for this, but given the fact that they need exact... If they are a Delver deck, they need exact the force wasteland and then we're in a situation where we've got like a bridge we've got four icarids so that's another thing that's really nice about a fourth icarid when when you play for three icarids for a while you do genuinely notice how how much having just three icarids uh affects your um affects your dredges So we're not getting Wasteland, which is a relief. They could have Wastelanded us, though, potentially. Scary. That's a really good draw in this situation. Um, I'm going to do it off the City of Brass, just in case the uh, the City of Brass gets Wastelanded. 
Um, but I'm pretty happy with how things are going now after we drew that gemstone mine. If we didn't draw that gemstone mine, that was very scary. As I said, this this is this is part of the reason why this was like almost a mulligan. Like if we didn't draw that land there, if he cantrips into wasteland, our hand just does nothing. Um, but we do have a lot of good draws there. Any land is good. Any uh, blue, any blue cantrip is good. LED is good. Um, so we had a lot of outs there. Oh, nice, we hit the ox. Um, I'm going to do it off the gemstone mine here, because uh, I don't think we're going to want to cast ox more than once, and I think my life total is more valuable. Um, I'm not going to discard the bridge just yet, because I want to force him to bolt his own creature. If he wants to avoid me casting a Hogak next turn. Um, and if we get an Ox in play, it's just like an irrelevance. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's the Phoenix. It's the Phoenix Delver deck. I've seen this. I thought it might be when he cast that card. Um, it transforms into Doomsday, but because of that, it's got no graveyard hate. It's just like an absolutely abysmal matchup this is, I expect, for them. Probably like as bad as it gets. Uh, eat that. Eat that. Eat that. Um. Our life total is getting pressured pretty hard here, so I want to uh, actually put some damage down. I'm going to name days first, I think. And he just scoops it up. Okie dokie. Um, I assume this is the uh, the one with Doomsday in the sideboard. Though that one generally uses Buried Alive. I wasn't sure if they used Faithless Looting in the list. But uh, sideboarding against Delva. Take out a breakthrough, bring in a Lotus Petal. The reason for that is Lotus Petal lets you play around days. Um and break through uh, break through oh, oh, oh yeah break breakthrough is bad in multiples um, yeah I'll make my hand bigger because someone in the comments of a previous video said uh, your hands too small to see I watch on phones so uh, yeah I'll make the hand bigger hopefully that's a bit more visible uh, I like having as much screen space as possible, especially since dredge boards get a bit complicated. Um, I'm keeping this seven because it's got it, it, dazes is never a card that will ever do anything against us, and it's got two lootings and a dredger, uh, so there's a lot of strength in this hand. Um, 
I guess I play the second pedal out just to play around Spell Pierce or something. I don't know. I probably wouldn't even play around Spell Pierce. I'd probably just let it resolve if, if they Spell Pierced me. Um... I don't see the need to cast Faithless Looting right now. If we get surgical, it's bad in response to the looting. Um, I'd rather just have the pedals around because having two, three mana in play lets us, uh, lets us, um, yeah. See, this is this is what I was worried about. I mean, I could have preempted that by cabal therapying their um, cabal therapying them. I could have preempted that, but I mean, if they've got force and then wasteland, it's just like terrible, right? Like if they go okay, or, or like like not even if they have, not even if they force the therapy. If if I name surgical extraction and their hand is just like I don't know, like force wasteland, uh, it's just really bad for us. Like it's not. Probably not like game losingly bad, but like this isn't game losingly bad either. Um, I mean, we might lose just because we get unlucky here, but uh, I'm not too concerned. That's a really good draw. Uh, I play this out now. The reason I do that is because if we draw a Stinkweed Imp next turn, it means that we can just discard it to Putrid Imp, then Faith of Sleeting just dredges. Um, which is better. Also, they might just waste a bolt on this right now, in which case, good. It's one less bolt going towards my face. I'm fine with that. It also fuels Icarid. Though I don't think I'll return Icarid straight away. I'd like to be in a situation where I can do something cute and... Um, Do something cute and return an Icarid. Um, I'm just going to cast this now. Hopefully we draw into a land. Or a dredger. That's really good. Um, now it's a case of, well, do I want to therapy them? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Maybe that's bad. Maybe he's going to buried alive into a bunch of arc like phoenixes and then I'm going to lose. Uh, it's possible. Now I will return the Icarid. Um, that's really, really good. Hitting that there is absolutely awesome. I'm going to see what's going on, I think. I'm not in any rush here, I don't think. Um, I don't know. I'm going to name like Brainstorm, I guess. Yeah, see, that's why I didn't want to cast Faith of Sleeting there, because I was very scared that they've just got a handful of dazes and they make my... Uh, they make my flashback faces leasing look very stupid. You don't have to rush against Delver. You, we have the tools to just sort of do this, right? Like, and th there's nothing in the hand that tells me, oh yeah, next turn he's going to return a bunch of Artlight Phoenixes. Like, maybe he gets lucky and he can. Like, this is awkward because now he can cast both dazes. But if he does that, he's like so far behind of doing anything that's relevant in the matchup. Whereas we're going to be able to just threaten to put a Hogak into play this turn. Uh, I'm going to eat one of the Icarids here because uh, I want to be able to dredge. Hitting another bridge is amazing. Um,
and he just scoops it up. He did like I, I was just trying to work out what I'd have had to have done is I'd have had to sack both Lotus Petals, cast Hogak, he dazes it most likely. We don't pay for the daze. We then therapy them, sacking an Icarid, they can daze it if they want. We won't pay for it, but if 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 they do daze it, we just we just uh, if they yeah if they don't daze it, we just name daze. If they do daze it, we do nothing. Then we just flash back the face of sleuthing, and there's like basically no way they can come back from that. We can then sack the, we can then cast the hogak again. It's it's just like hopeless for them at that point. Um, yeah, I mean this is what happens, right? Like there's no need to run into surgicals for no reason you like you don't have to they're, like there's no dread horde arcanist anymore there's no threat that they're going to flash back the surgical so why bother just play it a bit slow and generally you get paid off uh okay we're against roman evans i actually played against this guy last night he was on burn with ley lines um but i don't like this is a good hand actually against burn um game one Putrid Imps are a really good card to have because it like saves you some damage from their creatures. But um, I'm going to mulligan this because he might not be playing Burn with Leyline. I can't imagine there's people just jamming Burn in leagues. Um, this is way better. This is way better. He is just jamming burning leads. Okay, he's just a freak. Uh, what do we draw? Okay, that's a good enough draw. I'm playing out all the Lion's Eye Diamonds because it plays around Eidolon of the Great Revel. I'm going to target myself with that name Stink Minimp because we can't just go off with Cephalid Colosseum this time. we got one, two, three, four, five. We have to wait a turn. So the best thing to do here is just therapy ourselves um, and then we can go off next turn. Eidolon of the Great Revel is fine here because we don't actually have to cast any spells. I'm going to crack this for blue just to save us the life. Um, funny how I said that the two matchups with Gemstone Mine are very good. I'll burn and blue red Delver, and that's all we've played against so far. Um, In this matchup, oh, Fire Blast targeting Monastery Swift Spur. Ouch. That takes all our bridges. Very sad. However, it does mean they lose all of their. Does mean they lose all of their. Um, mountains, which I'm happy about. I am going to lose. Two. I wasn't going to before he did that. However, uh, now he's done that, I am going to play into the Eidolon of the Great Revel because we've got no Icarids in the graveyard. I'm happy to pay two life in order to get some Icarids in the graveyard. Um, also, if we hit Ox, we can cast that without losing any life, which we did. Um, you saw I did a little trick there in that I was like, I didn't crack the LED for... I didn't crack the LED for double red, uh, for triple red, so that I could save one life on the. Uh, it's not really a trick, but you you can save you can you can crack it for blue, and then if you've got two LEDs, you crack the other for red. Use the remaining two blue and the red, um, and then have two red left over, uh, in order to flash back an ox. So that's a cute thing you can do. Um, Don't want to mull myself out because I can't kill straight away. 
I don't know, just leave myself with like five cards in deck. That should be enough to win the game. I'm not even going to bother shocking myself. The only card that you want to take out of their hand is Fire Blast when you... Um, if they've got an Eidolon in play. If they don't have an Eidolon in play, you want to like just mind twist them. But if they've got an Eidolon in play, there's no point taking two to take cards out of their hand that... that uh, that deal three, especially when they top deck cards that deal three, and yeah, he just scoops it up. So in come all of these, because I know he's on ley lines from yesterday. Though one thing I will say, I blind sideboard for ley lines against Burn. The reason I do this is because Burn's such a favourable matchup. Um, you generally can't lose unless your opponent's got like an insanely fast hand and you like brick. Um, and most of the hate they run is pretty irrelevant, apart from Leyline. Like, sometimes they run Surgicals, sometimes they run Crypts. If they run Crypts, obviously, take out your Leyline removal. It's not useful. But more of them seem to be on Leylines nowadays. Um, I like, I kind of like taking out a Breakthrough in against, like, when the, when you want, when you, like, normally you take out Putridimps, right? But this is a super aggressive matchup. Putridimps like a good card because it can block. Uh, in the early turns, and drawing multiple breakthroughs is kind of bad, uh, and then I'm just going to trim a careful study because I don't want to cut a putrid imp. You could trim a thug here, maybe, but uh, I like having the max number of dredges, but maybe it's wrong. This is fine because it answers ley line. It can also potentially answer double ley line if he has two ley lines. There we go, that's the ley line. Um... I'm going to mount this in my turn just to play around. Oh, that's a really good draw. I'm going to bounce this in my turn just to play around Pyroblast. It's unlikely he has it, but there's no point not playing around it. It's not like they can recast their ley lines. Um, So whether we just wait a turn in order to use two Cephalic Colosseums or not kind of depends on what they do this turn. Um, if they just start bolting our face, I'm like, okay, that's a bit scary. Uh, if they just drop like an Eidolon, I probably just do nothing uh, and just pass again. Um, Roiling Vortex. If opponent casts a spell and no damage was spent to cast it, deals five damage to them. That's a very good card against us. Okay, so that basically just means you can't cast Cabal Therapy ever, or Hogak. Uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, we've got no... We have got no... What was I going to say? We have got no... Ox of Agonis in the deck, because I took it out to bring in Ley Line Answers, and because of that... Um... There's no point cracking it for red there. It's not relevant. I don't see the point of taking five just to like speed up our clock. I don't think that's relevant. Um, I am just going to get as many Icarids in Graveyard as possible, however. This is fine. I think I just do nothing here. I mean, we could, we could, we could potentially like make some zombies, but we're not casting Hogak anyway. Um, this is only bad if he plays a creature and bolts his own creature. In which case, this is pretty bad. But like, I think if he's doing that and not killing us, then we're probably winning anyway. So I'm not too concerned. given we've got enough fuel to kill them many times over. He is taking five on himself to kill his own swift spear to remove our bridges. I don't think this is a winning line. It's a cute line, but um, I, don't, I don't think that's worth it. 
somehow. Do you see? Do you? Can you not just bolt? Can you not just bolt it? <laughs> why? Why take five? I don't know. But yeah, that does get rid of all of our bridges. This was what I was kind of concerned about, but like, I don't think we lose the game from this point. Like, look, he's just expended two cards from his hand to do nothing except take five, basically. Like, removing the bridges, you're, you're not going to magically win the game because there's no copies of Bridge from Below in my graveyard. Like, maybe if he's got a Surgical too, but I've still got three Narcomedas in play. Like, potentially if he has the, like, exact cards he needs, he can win the game here, but I'm not very worried. We know one of the cards in his hands are Leyline. Uh, so, like, I don't know if he had, like, Kozilek's Return or, like, Volcanic Fallout. I think they play Volcanic Fallout because that one deals 2-2. Two, two. The players. Um, maybe their hand's just Lava Spikes. Which would make sense why they didn't use a Bolt to kill. Um, we actually, there's no bridges we can hit, there's no Icarids we can hit, and, um, there's no Narcomedes we can hit, so there's actually no point dredging here. Like, actually none, so, just put them to two, I guess, they're gonna die to their own Boiling Vortex if we don't just kill them next turn. Um... With zero lands in play, I don't think they can deal 10, 9 to us. Uh, and yep, yeah, that's the game. Nice, nice. Round 3. Uh, unkeepable. Unkeepable. This is pretty good. The uh, size of these cards is tilting me a little bit. But, um... So, we have a choice here. We can either keep... Either play around Wasteland or play around Force of Will. I actually like keeping the Lotus Battle because we have an Ox of Agonis in the deck. Which makes... Um, keeping the Lotus Petal here a lot better. If we didn't, maybe it's better to keep the uh, careful study. But I think with this, this is... Uh, oh wait, I don't want to pass. Okay, that got forced. Pitching Stifle, spooky. Probably Delver. I'm going to play this out. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna just run straight into whatever... Yeah, okay. So, good thing we kept the land. I uh, kept the pedal, the uh, looting even. Um, I mean, there is there are cards we can draw here that are terrible. Um, this isn't great, but it's serviceable, I guess. I don't think I'm going to return Icarid straight away. Maybe it's wrong, but um, I don't. Th think it's worth it given we have no bridges though we had a bridge there so I'm the real idiot <laughs> okay yeah he knows what he's beat I guess Narcomibus Gary um, just do this Nimble Mongoose only is there's only one deck I didn't feel the need to comment on that but yeah we're playing against like Stifle Rug Canadian Threshold if you're a boomer um, Canadian Threshold I think Nimble Mongoose is an unplayable card and I think it's been unplayable for a long long time and I think one of the best things the Rug decks did in the old format was just ditch Nimble Mongoose because it's not good. It's not. It's not good. It's not good. I know you like to live in this fancy world where you can just sit behind a nimble mongoose. You like to live in this fancy world where you can sit behind a nimble mongoose all day, but uh, it's simply not good. This is a very all-in hand, but um, I kind of like it. I mean, like I like it more than a four, right? Like if we draw any land, this is like actually pretty 
good. If we don't draw a land, we can just run straight into force of will, like like monkeys. It'll be a uh, it'll be return to monkey. Oh, that's a terrible draw. Why do we have to draw that? He could daze that. He doesn't daze that. This plays around surgical, and that's about it. But I'm happy to do that. I don't think. I, I mean, we could play this slow. What? We'd have even bricked. We'd have bricked. We'd have just got one Narcomoeba. He just scoops. He's just had enough. He mulls to five. Has nothing. I mean, understandable. And he just scoops. Wow. That was still winnable from his end. What would we have dredged after that? Um, turn after we'd have got a Nicarid. Oh, MTG is not letting me go any deeper. Uh, I don't know. That's crazy to me. But whatever, I'll take the W, I guess. Uh, against Wiki. Mulligan. Last time I played against this guy, I think he was on, like, Miracles. Um, oh, God. I really wish that was a gold land. This, however, is the Nuts. Um, I'm just trying to work out what's better if we get forced. Do I want to keep the Grave Troll or the Looting? Because um, what I want to do is I want to... I don't think I'm going to play into Force. I'm like fairly certain... I mean, I'll check my spreadsheet. He's been on Miracles the last two times I've played against him. I don't want to just run straight into... Um, I don't want to just run straight into Force of Will. So what I want to do is I want to go Cephalic Coliseum, Lion's Eye Diamond, then just break through X's zero, not crack the Lion's Eye Diamond, then the turn after crack Lion's Eye Diamond, Cephalic Coliseum. This guy also was on a super weird build with loads of NAR sets and like days undoings, like three NAR sets or something ridiculous. Um, my thought is what happens if he forces the Lion's Eye Diamond? Um... Uh, we need to draw a land either way. I think I'd rather have the Grave Troll. It's close, though. Actually, that's probably a bad order. Mm, probably that, that, that. Just run this out. See if we get forced. Hopefully we don't get forced. Don't force me, please. Please, no force. I mean, if we do get forced, it's not the end of the world. But I just feel like the, the, the if what happens if we keep the looting and then brick on a dredges when we break through X's zero is just, like, really bad. Like, really bad. And also, get having more than one dredger here with the um, Cephalid Coliseum is, like, nice. Wow, okay. That's fine. We still need to draw a land. But this is better if we draw a Cephalic Coliseum than um, the other line. But, like, this is still not ideal. Oh, there we go. That's pretty good. 
That's really good actually. That's pretty much the best draw bar Lion's Eye Diamond. Which is like always the best draw. People sometimes say to side out Lion's Eye Diamond against combo decks because it's bad. You just run into Force of Will and then lose, right? Haha. <laughs> But they don't realize what they don't realize is you do, you don't have to run into the force of wills, guys. You don't have to. If you think your opponent has force of will, just do, just don't run into it. Just don't run in. Just just don't just don't crack it. No one's forcing you to crack your lion's eye diamonds. This is like bad if he plays like Narsa or Hull Breach next turn. But like I also want another land. So what can you do? Might be a going to hand size thing here. If he keeps passing with three mana up, I'm like going to hand size. I'm not going to give him four treasures off of Hull Breacher, I don't think. I think that's bad enough that we probably lose. Chooses to not shuffle. Suspicious. Wow, I am a genius. Um, this is like really bad. Well, I mean, if we ke if we kept the faith of looting here, we wouldn't be in any better of a situation than we're currently in. Um, we got somewhat screwed over by the fact that our opponent managed to have two lion's eye diamonds in a row. Uh, not lion's eye diamonds. Two forces in a row. Um, at the start of the game. I mean, I'm quite happy if he keeps just uh, fate sealing me. Yeah, I think he's realised what's up. Um... I mean, that's a good draw, but I'm still doing the same thing. Good thing my opponent didn't fate seal me that turn, though, because uh, it would have sucked to have discarded that. Mystic Sanctuary put Force of Negation on top of the deck. Sure. Uh, my main concern right now is if he finds, like, Days Undoing, unlike uh, Mind Twists me, then that's really bad. But... There's nothing I can really do here. Uh, we mold to four, and um, our opponent had two forces. It happens, right? Like, our four wasn't even very good, but like, it was better than going to three for sure. Drawing another land here is actually really good. Um, So we now his hand is force of negation. Oh god. Okay. I mean, I may as well just scoop to that, right? Like, there's no way I'm beating getting mind twisted seven life with a Jace. Yeah. I'll scoop to that. Um. I mean, this is a really winnable matchup. This guy has a lot of uh, hate post board. He has, what is it he has? He has, according to my spreadsheet, he has relics and surgicals and snapcasters on top of like three NAR sets and hull breaches and days undoings. Uh, so he's got a lot of hate post board. It would have been good to win that game one. I actually don't sideboard anything here. Uh, I don't think having a Lotus Pedal is better than having a third breakthrough against these control decks. This isn't like against Delver, where being able to play around days is relevant. 
Um, being able to play through lots of forces and spell pieces is de relevant. They're not they're not wastelanding us, um, and it's not being taxed in that way. They are trying to put up a wall of counter spells and hate, and um, yeah. Um, it's not terrible, but it doesn't do much. This is abysmal. This is good. Bottom, bottom. Do I want to lose to Surgical? Not really, I'm just going to play this slow. Yeah, this is what I mean. Previous game, he forced my Lion's Eye Diamond. This game, he forced my... Not my Lion's Eye Diamond. This is why you can't trust them. They want to lull you into a false sense of security. By thinking they're big brain, you just don't let them. Just don't let them do it to you. Um... I mean, I guess I just target myself here. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to try and do anything cute. I'm just going to try and get going. Maybe, maybe we lose to surgical extraction. I don't care. But when people play like this, you can't just assume, oh, because they did something last time, they're going to do it again this time. Some people just play like absolute monkeys. Like, we're monkey deck, but they are also monkey deck. And they will not make any plays that make any sense. And they will just keep you constantly guessing on what the uh, thing that's going on is. And, like, they'll, they'll, they'll win games if you don't play disciplined and just... Uh, don't let their weird plays intimidate you. I think I'm actually going to name Narset here. I think this guy has so many Narsets in his deck. And Narset is like scarier to me here than... Um, Narset is scarier here than Hold Breacher because it draws him more cards. Um... Lion's Eye Diamond, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack Lion's Eye Diamond in upkeep and dredge thug. I'm not going to return Icarid eating Hogak. Um, I just want to sort of get my dredge chain going. I think this is a hull breacher, but I don't care. I'm like 90% sure he's going to flashback Hole Breacher. If he Hole Breaches and then days on doing there's like nothing we can do. Um, if we get to attack with Icarid now, I think I might actually name days on doing because the fact that he's not played anything on turn 3 means he doesn't have Nasa. He could have Jace, but Jace does not line up very well versus Icarid. Um... I could name Force as well, Force of Negation. Uh, I'd probably only do that if we hit a Faithless Looting. Who's looking forward to the new Lord of the Rings Warhammer 40,000 Magic the Gathering crossover, guys? Smash that like button and subscribe if you're excited for that. Who's with me? Okay, Surgical Extraction on Icarid is annoying and lame. Um, I don't know why he was sandbagging that. Um, 
but that makes me somewhat concerned if he has Snapcaster and can take on Narc Amoebas. Uh, but we do have access to um, Ox Vagonus. Another reason why Ox Vagonus is very good against these blue decks, on top of like dodging Daze, dodging Spell Pierce, dodging Force of Negation, it's just like an extra thing they have to try and Surgical. Um, yeah. But I'm not going to stop dredging here. I'm not going to try and find another land. Maybe if Narcomoeba gets surgical, that might be the correct play. But I'm not going to concern myself with that. Well, that's just perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. We hit both. Um, okay, so we need to do some maths. Uh, not maths, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, yeah. Maybe I like naming Force of Will first. Just because uh, we want more things to eat. Okay, I mean, that makes this a lot easier. Because we know we can't get forced here. I need to pop this out. It's so hard to see which ones you've highlighted. Uh, yeah, that's right. And he scoops it up. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So if we'd have if we'd have just ran straight into that, um, ugh, I wish we had a land. This one would be excellent. If we'd have just ran straight into that, um, I actually don't hate this. It's not ideal, but. Um, Having putrid imps really good. That's really good too. I'm gonna play because he's got. I wanted to cast Tomon Cabal Therapy, but because of the fact he's got open blue mana, seems like a waste of time. Because we've seen he's got Flusterstorm, so I'm just gonna play putrid imp and annoy him. Maybe it gets swords to plowshares. Oh well. I'll call his bluff. If he's got swords to plowshares, he's got swords to plowshares. You got me. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's get hit with Flusterstorm. Would really have liked to have hit like a land or a dredger, but you can't always get what you want in life. This brainstorm to me is an I have a surgical on top of my deck brainstorm, I think. Uh, I'm going to name Force of Will if this resolves. Oh, Force of Negation pitch Narset. I'm happy with that. Yeah, draw the top card. Hmm, wonder if that's a piece of grave I'd take, guys. I wonder. That's a really good draw. Maybe that's a small pump. Because um, I'm thinking, what if we draw Faith of Sleuting or Cabal Therapy? We want to be able to cast that off the Mana Confluence. But maybe drawing Lion's Eye Diamond and then being able to protect. Uh, ugh. That sucks. Um, 
but not much we can do about that. Maybe I shouldn't have played that into three open blue mana, but what can you do? Um, another reason why it would have been nice to draw, like, ever, ever draw a uh, surgical, really, really you surgical me. You surgical my bridge? Sure. It would have been nice to draw, like, a dredger or, like, a land. Well, not I mean we drew a land, but I mean, like, draw a dredger. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was a mulligan. I don't think so, though. Given how this game has played out so far. We just needed to draw a dredger. Pitching Narset, keeping Hull Breacher. I mean, maybe that was a tell, but should he rather have the Narset, right? Unless you're just trying to get me. It's weird play. It's really weird. I mean, he's winning the game, so who am I to criticise? But yeah, all right. I mean, we still got Icarids and Narcomibas. Yeah, I think I'll scoop the game to that one. Eh. Maybe we're okay if we draw a dredger. It's tough though. I shouldn't have attacked in case he's drawn another hull breacher. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that hand was just too slow. But I mean, he had two surgicals, so. What am I to do? The real problem was that we lost game one. That was the real problem. But, like... What can you do about that, you know? I think we play out this land and walk into a force of world, because why not? It's a free country. But yeah, I don't think we're winning this game. Maybe his hand's just a bunch of, like, nothing, and we actually do win this game, but I'll be astounded. What on earth? This is what I mean. Like, like, what are these plays? What are those? What are those? So far he's casted three surgical extractions and took one relevant card. Um... Who knows, man? Who knows? It's, it's a mystery to me. When people play like this, I... I, I, I uh, it's always confusing. But you, you start noticing that people play like this... Like, you, you'll pick it up quite quick when they're playing like this. Like, they'll be playing... They'll be making game actions that don't make much sense. 
and they'll be seemingly doing them at like complete random um, yeah that's just lethal annoying but we lost game one there was nothing we could really do game one maybe that was a mole game three but um I think if the the draws had gone a little different there um, we could have potentially done something the fact that we got our therapy forced force of negation really sucked but like I don't know I don't know maybe it was just a weak keep maybe it was just a weak keep all right final round let's try and get the full one this hand is not terrible but we can do better this is better this isn't like the nuts I want like another enabler here but like against turn one mother of runes this seems pretty good right um, now there is the question of would you rather breakthrough x is one or breakthrough x is zero in this situation breakthrough x is one here if we didn't have oxford bonus i don't think this is even a question um but given we do i still think it's actually better to break through x is one because if we brick we end up in a situation like this and uh, i think having the careful studies marginally better than having the second land though if they wastelanders and cast thalia we feel like absolute morons um but i just like being able to dredge lots um the only thing i'm really scared about him having here is like scavenging ooze just like natural scavenging ooze so that's what i'm going to name here um then we've got a backup therapy if that goes wrong Okay, he's just scooping up his cards. Uh, is Maverick, but Maverick nowadays, I always expect ley lines. Always expect ley lines. Um, when you're siding for ley lines, you can take out an Icarid, it's not the end of the world. Oxvagon is sometimes nice to play around Containment Priest. Uh, I'd like something like this, I think. I like something like this. Oh, I got 61 cards. Um, take out the Putridimp. The Putridimp's not a... Um, it's got no lands. It's got nothing! lots of lands there. I'm gonna go to four. I'm no wimp. I'm gonna get ley line there. I didn't get ley lined. Whoa 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 No I'm scared because I didn't get ley lined. Maybe he's just like, oh no, I got to five, can't find my ley lines. Maybe it's one of them. Maybe he's got surgical, maybe he's got containment priest. Who knows? Maybe he's got rest in peace, that would be really scary, wouldn't it? Um, maybe he's got natural scoos. Yeah, that's the one. So... Scavenging is generally pretty much GG unless you go absolutely wild with this. We are looking to make Hogak many times. There's Hogak. Um, there's Stink We Don't. But we don't have many therapies and they got a Caracas in play. Mm, we're probably not winning this one, guys. Sorry to spoil you. They then be, that being said, they've only got one green mana. He scoops! No way! No way! He could have easily won that game. He could have easily won that game. But I'm not take I'm not I'm not complaining. 
Like, he could have easily won that game. Like, wow. We only have one Icarid. He just eats the Icarid. Then what do we draw? One, two, three, four, five, six. He eats the... Uh, I mean, we cast Togak again. Make more z zombies. If he only has one green mana, he doesn't have any more. He might just get overrun at this point. Because he has to eat that Icarid again. We get enough. Yeah, that starts to become pretty scary. Because the number of zombies we have just gets a bit too much. Um, but, I mean, if he gets, like, any more green mana at any point, he's, like, screwed. But, whatever. We manage to... Uh, Clinch the 4-1. Awkward games against this guy. I've, I'm, I, this guy, I've played... I've played games against him where they've been like terrible 1-2 losses. Where they've just taken forever. My opponents used like every single second of their clock. And they've played like weird the entire match. And then I play games where I've just like 2-0. They just like scoop on turn 0. Because they've just been comboed. Because they keep a hand that like loses to... A solid dredge hand, you know, like it's 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 um, it's odd, but uh, it happens. They were close games. They had a lot of hate. Those are the ones you tend to lose. We did a nice clean sweep on everyone else, and I think if we didn't lose game one, I think we had a really solid chance of winning that match. I think we were a bit unlucky to lose game one. Um, but it happens. Overall, I think the deck ran really well. I mean, we didn't come, we didn't feel like we needed main deck action rider in any of those matchups. Um, yeah, that was that was really good. Uh, remember to do all of the YouTube algorithm stuff. Thanks for watching.